you're right there in the trenches with them. To be right in front of these guys when the hits are happening, it's awesome. Any kind of job, business, you're in relationships or everything. You gotta love what you're doing. And I think we all do. Well, there goes Chad. I don't know Chad. Equipment guy. Those are your commanders. He's our leader. I follow his lead. That's the cool thing about our job. We're part of the team. We have no room for error. The whole error. We can't forget one jersey. If we brought a thousand of them, it doesn't matter if we forget one. There's a great deal of problem solving in this job. You take this off. I don't think you could do this job if you didn't really have a passion for it. We're ready to go. We're traveling every game with the team. Quick trips, quick turnarounds. It's absolutely spectacular. My name is Chris Smith. I'm the Director of Equipment Operations. 32 years with the Chargers. Kevin Duddy, I'm the Assistant Equipment Manager for LA Chargers. I've been here 31 years. And Chris Smith, I've been working with him since day one. Tasso Panopoulos, I've been working for the Chargers since 2017. My name is Chad Jessup. I'm an Equipment Assistant for the Chargers, entering my sixth season with the team. Hey Chad, you take this off? You can take it off here. Chad keeps us entertained. We always joke that he can cover the room in three steps. Kevin's, you know, a, a tenured veteran. A wise man that uh, you go to for advice and questions. Kevin and I have been working together, gosh, 30 years. We like to keep each other on our toes. Smitty uh, keeps us all in line. Chris is the boss man. Tasso's head down and, and just gets his, his job done. He also whistles Christmas songs year round which drives me crazy. The, the kind of the quiet freak, freak we call him, that just kind of goes off and does his job and, and knocks it out. You gotta love what you're doing, and I think we all do. I don't think you could do this job if you didn't really have a passion for it. You're here early. Most days you're not done till late. You know, we're going seven days a week. It's really important that we all get along, and we do. We have a great time. But it's football, and it better be fun. It is fun. Traveling every uh, every game with the with the team, quick trips, quick turnarounds. You're, you're going to NFL stadiums in different cities. It's very exciting. The prep begins the minute the game ends the previous week. As soon as our game was over Sunday night, we begin the process of separating out the dirty from the clean, washing the dirty. We meet the trucks here at the facility. Everything comes off. So all the player bags will go into the locker room and inside the player bags is our helmet, cleats, shoulder pads, knee and thigh pads. We're in the, uh, the locker room unpacking the player bags. Kevin and Chris are back here organizing, separating that laundry further, getting it washed, getting it thrown in. And then we start washing the uniforms in-house, getting the stains out. Looking for any potential tears, stains or blemishes on the graphic. And if we find them, like here, we found a pretty pretty heavily stained pair of pants that didn't come out in the wash. We'll just set it aside. You can't mess with the logo. So when you see this, it's instantly, I gotta replace those. Can't fix it, so those are done. This right here, that's from like, the, that's from the bear's face mask. Get that stuff off. You found any that, had, that need repairs yet? Joey has a small one. After the jerseys have been washed, we get it, we get them, we get our hands in them. We just kind of fall, go through every jersey and every pair of pants to make sure there's no loose threads or any holes in them. And I mean, these guys are out in the field hitting each other pretty hard. So you're, you're gonna have tears every week in these jerseys. Got a hole there. Gotta repair that. If we, if we don't, it's gonna get a lot bigger. And what's gonna happen here is we're gonna have our seamstress come over Pick them up, sew them up, get them ready for the next game. We are wearing the same color jersey in New York that we wore last Sunday night against the Bears. That makes it a little harder because you've got to not only get those clean, but you got to replace the jerseys that were traded. And that's a new thing in the NFL in the last 10 years that players trade their jerseys. And now we're going to go through, basically do a roll call to see what jerseys we have remaining from the game yesterday. 
31. So we go through and we, we find out who traded their jerseys and we have to get those replaced. So I'll order those from the uh, company Ripon Athletic who Nike contracts to make our jerseys there in Wisconsin. So I've got my master size list here and I'll just refer to this as I'm going along. I'm gonna state Italy blue, one each, number zero. Powder blue jerseys, technically called Italy blue by Nike because it's the Italian national color on their national soccer uniforms. And then he's a 42. S cap 32. There's a great deal of problem solving in this job that you can't prepare for, but you got to be ready to at any moment's notice. We have no room for error. We can't forget one jersey. If we brought a thousand of them, it doesn't matter if we forget one. So that's why we have checklists for checklists and double, triple check everything before we leave. So these are the spare jerseys. This is what allows us to sleep at night. We have a backup jersey for every player on the team. This trunk will sit behind the bench. If we need to replace a jersey on the fly, we can do it right here. So this is one of the most important trunks we have. You can do it on an individual player basis too. How can we help this player you know, succeed by making sure his equipment's perfect and fits right, his gloves grip good, you know, all that stuff. The jersey's a big thing. It's a really big part of the, of the game day uniform. Some players, you know, they, are fine with putting they put it on and they're good but some players they might they might you know everybody's body's shaped a little differently and some guys have pads that are a little bigger than others and some guys they don't want anybody to grab them so they'll want us to tighten the jersey up for them or tighten the, tighten the, uh, the shoulders up it's really based on their needs and then we, we take care of it the more you're around it the more you kind of see what players need kind of little quirks that each guy has josh palmer he changed his mind how he likes his jersey now he likes it to be shorter and have elastic on the bottom. So this is his brand new jersey, and we're gonna basically have it sent off to Lita for her to have her make it look just like this one. Joey Bosa, we're going to take, one on one jersey, we'll take in the shoulders and on the sides like we normally do. But the other one, we're gonna put Velcro in the front. So he says it felt a little loose on him, so let's try that. Captain's patches, STS. Okay. So it's full full set for everybody. It'll be, There'll be patches to take, take off the powder ones, but the STS ones on. Once we find the repairs that need to be had, I put a clip on them so our seamstress can recognize where they are. Put a little note on them, what needs to be done, and then he returns it a couple days later and, and everything's ready to go. This game is gonna be our salute service game. Now the big thing here is here we have Austin Eckler. He's three stars, that means he's won captain's patch three years. So I gotta make sure I have the right amount of stars there. Khalil Mack, now when you see the gold star, that means He's had it more than four years. Four stars is the most you can have. Kind of, it, it's a fun, fun to be back here and just kind of, not zone out, but just kind of my little corner back here. These balls are being made for this week for the game to replenish and prepare so that we have 24 balls going into New York. 12 game balls, 12 backups for each game. Tried to kind of like ballpark it. I think anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour of prep time goes into each football. It takes seven minutes to remove the mud alone from the football. It'd be a great time-lapse video. Equipment is is a uh, is adults arts and crafts. And the stuff we we throw together and do. I've already got a baseline of mud mixture from the previous batch I did. I just want to freshen it up a little bit. So we call it a mud mixture because we also add a leather conditioner to the mud. Putting mud on, we're going to make the ball darker. It's going to give it a more desirable feel but we also still want to be incorporating moisture and not drying out the leather. This was a collaboration. This was talking to other guys in the industry, other equipment managers, what's working for you, here's what we're experiencing, how have you addressed that communication with the quarterbacks and, and seeing, you know, 
try testing it. Hey, does, how does this feel? How does this work? Do you like this? To kind of get to the current process we have. And there, there's nothing written in stone. It can, it can evolve and change. And I, I would hope and expect that it would. That's what makes it fun. It was actually funny. I'll do the, I do the K balls on, on game day also. So I'll take the, the K balls over to the, the kickers to look at before the game. And they do the same thing. They feel it with their hands. And Justin's sitting there and he goes, hold on, why do you feel it with your hands? You kick the ball with your foot. Shouldn't you be like feeling it with your foot or something? He's like, no, you can just feel it with your hands. It's fine. <laughs> I've never uh, thought of myself as particularly uh, artistic, but it, it has been pointed out to me a few times that this is a, an art form. Yeah, that's some of the contrast right there. You've got, I mean, that's, that's everything except for mud right there. Now mud, and then this is after mud. I always thought it was a really unique process. I always like the, the transformation. When, when you see how the ball starts and, and the finished product, it's a, uh, Pretty uh, amazing, the, the amount of work that goes into uh, to the footballs you see on Sunday. That's all she wrote. This whole NFL and any any kind of job, business you're in, relationships or everything. It's fun, fun getting to work with the quarterbacks. Those are your commanders, and, and he's our leader, and I follow his lead. Where'd he go? I'll, I'll follow him through a brick wall if we got to, but yeah, it's fun to get to work with those guys. I started as a student manager at Mission Viejo High School, and then even after I had graduated in 2009, kind of stayed on with the team as a grad assistant for a high school team, which is somewhat untraditional, but when you're talking about Mission Viejo High School football, one of the top ranked, high school football teams in the country. There's there's a long list of high school football players that end up playing in the NFL from Mission Viejo, and it's fun to be part of that tradition. Well, there goes Chad. Look at Chad. I don't know Chad. Equipment guy. He was our equipment guy at uh, Mission Viejo High School, home of the Diablos. He was with Dallas for a bit when I was there, Dak's rookie year, and now he's here. We're ready to go. We're ready to go. Chad's the quarterback guy. They went to high school together. Mark knows he works for the Chargers, so he, he, he's looking for a time where he can pump him up. I guess he kind of had like a little slip up in the broadcast booth where he saw his buddy and said, hey, I, hey there's Chad. I know that guy. It was very, uh, very genuine. It was a very genuine moment. It was kind of fun. And yeah, I sent him a text and thanked him for uh, putting my phone on fire. Once we get into the rest of the week, a, a traditional week, a Wednesday, you'll have the morning where you might be finishing some stuff up, but your day leads up to practice. That is the biggest part of our day, is going out there and supporting the coaches and players so we can have an efficient practice. It's nice just to like have that peace and quiet in the morning, listen to music or whatever. The biggest part of this job is just like stacking things in a way that it's easy for me to grab and go and it's not it's very organized probably more like organized chaos but it's organized every day i'll set up the field so that kind of entails like all the ball bags for position groups all the equipment the sleds the the first few weeks i was making like notes in my room just like making all these like just diagrams so i can remember everything you want to be as efficient as possible gotten it down to where i'm out here maybe an hour and a half Whatever week it is now, it's already a habit now. So once you have it down, it's like kind of therapeutic just to like have the system and just do it. Practice just is so like go go go, and anything I can do to help, if it's all right there for them, that means I'm doing a good job. Post-practice, we'll have helmets. Guys will finish with their pads, take them off. Bring all the helmets back here, and, and that's cleaning. We'll go ahead and sanitize those, and then wait for them to dry. There's top straps for the flex helmets. Sometimes those get cracked, hardware issues. We're looking for stuff that can ultimately save us on game day. 
all the shoulder pads will come back here where I'll start putting the jerseys on each and every one of them. A lot of these guys will have a little bit of Velcro at the edge of their pads just to keep the jersey from getting pulled off during the game. So what I'll do is flip the jersey inside out, get over the shoulder pad epaulet and make sure it fastened to the Velcro. And then once it's done, you can just go from the inside, pull it out and around and over and down and it's ready to go. The next time that you see these will be at the stadium on Sunday. As soon as practice is over on Saturday, the players will each have a bag in front of their locker. They'll pack their own helmet, shoulder pads, and cleats. And we're scanning through it, making sure all the equipment's in there, helmet, shoulder pads, knee and thigh pads. Those are the essentials. 64 and 79. Some guys might have additional equipment they want to pack. We'll bring those out and we'll check them off a list. Everything's checked off on our travel checklist and goes on the trucks, trucks are sealed, and that truck goes to the airport the next day. Every stadium on the road is different and every locker room is different. And that's what we really look at is what we're getting into as far as how many lockers are available. Do they have an equipment room that we can work out of? How big are their coaches' locker rooms? We're in unfamiliar territory. Guys need to know as soon as they're walking off the bus into the locker room that everything's in their locker that they need. Just making everything as comfortable and, and you don't want anyone to be distressed on game day. We want game day to be smooth so that the only thing that's in their mind is what they have to go out there and do, and that's play a football game. Kevin Duddy will get the locker room diagram from the other team that week prior to the, to the road trip. And I'm going to go through that locker room diagram. I'm gonna figure out where each player is gonna dress, where his locker is gonna be located. So in that diagram, I'll write in, all right, Justin Herbert's gonna be in this locker over here. Julie Bose will be in this locker room over here. And he'll plug everything in before we even get there. I'll put them in order in a book of the order they're gonna be in the locker room. And so when we arrive in New York, it's gonna be a quick process. I will come with the truck, everything gets unloaded. So by the time the truck gets to the stadium, the names are already up and we can just boom, move right in. When we get there, we wanna just be able to put up names and go. Hang in the uniforms for tomorrow's game. Hang them so when the players walk in the locker room, they see them. So on this side, they'll be on the right side. This side of the room will be on the left side. Processes that we do at home, that they're used to, we try to incorporate that in the road stadium as much as possible. Just testing to make sure both speakers are working. Yep. Lock the field, make sure the signal's clean. Test, test. One, two, three, four, five, six. When you walk out of the tunnel on game day, do you see the, the lights? and all the energy and on the sideline during these games. It's spectacular. It's absolutely spectacular. We come into work every day. We're thinking of ways we can help the team win. Nice job. And here we go, Darius Davis. That's the cool thing about our job is we're part of the team. Turn on the Jets, Darius. We can really help the team win if we have the equipment dialed in in the right way. Touchdown. And to be right in front of these guys when the, when the hits are happening, the bad times happen and the good times happen, you're right there in the trenches with them. I mean, hey, it's, it's fun. We're, we're, we go to practice, we're running around on the field. Sometimes we got to remind ourselves that we're working in, in football, and it's not just football, it's, it's professional football. It's awesome. What do you guys think we should call him? <laughs> How about the, the keeper of laundry? Keeper of laundry, yeah. And he, ta he takes gifts.
of jewelry over the years. That's actually the one that Simi Fihoko gave him last week, and he scored his first touchdown in the NFL. So, there you have it. <laughs>